<laughs> Welcome to Burning in Hell. Hello, welcome to a very exciting LA episode of Hell. I kind of manifested this. I can't believe she's in the studio with me. Oh we God. have like a podcast phenomenon. No. We have a Midwest <laughs> girly angel baby pussy popping queen. Oh God. I just came up with that. Um, and it's got a ring to it. We are with Morgan Absher, who is basically has the sickest story of quarantine <laughs> and i'm so excited to have you here morgan welcome to hell ah! thank you for having me i'm i'm ready this is i didn't this is also like this is a mental health podcast where yeah I just, and like comedy but i talk to people about their demons and i feel like your podcast came from almost a similar place oh my god but I, yeah i want to get started you're from minnesota minnesota i went to school in wisconsin ah uh. oh yeah, no, I'm Do not. Do we have a fan. beef? Yeah. <gasps> oh Fuck. no, should we just stop now? The Badgers. I gotta should go. Go Badgers. Um, no, but I, I do have to say, I mean, I'm gonna get hate for this, but Minnesota people had like good personalities. Oh yeah, we're the best. They're fun. What's the? But what do you think of the whole Minis Minnesota nice concept? It's Minnesota nice, but sneaky passive aggressive. Like, mm. there's niceness for sure. Like, you get a flat tire, someone will help you. You need your driveway shoveled. Sure. I'll be there. Mm -hmm. I got a snowblower even. But afterwards, you're like, the car is ugly. <laughs> what was it's that just accent? Like, people don't know how to be forward, which is what I appreciate so much about like East Coasters. You're just like, you're forward. Yeah. There's no bullshit. Yeah. You're straight to the point. And Minnesota people, we just beat around the bush. We don't know how. I to definitely get it out. had like some cultural issues where I couldn't tell how people felt. And also, yeah. people thought I was exotic because I'm half Italian. But that's, <laughs> that's, because every girl is so blonde and cute in the Midwest. And I'm mass stereotyping right now. But like, yeah, like you are Midwest queen. You're is Midwest it? royalty. <laughs> You're Midwest belle, someone would say. <laughs> no, I'm like just the most normal person. I am like horrifically normal. <laughs> would you call yourself basic? I mean, I'm weird. I am I think I'm too weird to be basic. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm just normal. Mm -hmm. I'm so, it's this whole thing, the podcast, everything blowing up, TikTok. Like I'm going to a TikTok party tonight. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Dude. I don't even, I don't belong here. Yeah, I was doing some research on you coming in, just creepy on you, but we call it research. Yeah. And you were kind of like, I was so uncomfortable when I heard that I like, I even had a fan. Cause you're like, so I'm not weird. someone that like. No. It, but it's, I think we're living in such a cool time where anyone could have a voice. Yeah. And I really love what you've done with your voice. Thank you. Did you go to um, University of Minnesota? I did. Yeah, I went there for undergrad and then came out to L.A. originally just after a shitty breakup. And it was like a mental health thing. And then moved back to Minnesota and then came back to L.A. for grad school. So you had an affinity for L.A. already. Yeah, my dad is from here, born, bred, raised. And oh. so I was always kind of a commuter kid. Okay, okay, so. okay. Because I was envisioning like you just like in a snowmobile in the middle of Minnesota and like suddenly just being thrown into like a TikTok party. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does feel like that. Like I've been in LA for a couple of years, but I mean, I was going to grad school. I didn't really do much. I've had experiences. Like I had a friend that played hockey for the Kings. So, you know, we would go out with them. Okay, cool. Minnesota guys. That course. is literally the most Minnesota story. I know. Because, yeah, it was content too. It was like, <laughs> like the hockey. hockey guys. Hockey guys, all I got was they like, snuck me into the KK a couple times, but <laughs> through the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> that was about it. So my friend was fucking one of them. Oh, yeah. You gotta you gotta take the perks. Hockey guys are so fun, but they are so dangerous. Psychotic. Oh, my God. Uh, the stuff I saw was just, I, I want to hit my head against the wall. My mom went to Cornell, and the first thing she said to me when I went to Wisconsin was stay away from the hockey guys. They're yeah. older than everyone. They have no teeth and they will give you an STD. And the bitch was right. It checks out. I should have listened it to that bitch. Out. <laughs> that bitch was right. Your mom knew. <laughs> I luckily, I didn't get any STDs from any of them, mm. but. They had an HB, HPV va vaccine now, thank goodness. Yeah, thank God, Gardasil. Gardasil, <laughs> shout out bitch. to Gardasil, swipe up. <laughs> um, I also, as an avid podcaster, I have a lot of people reach out to me and be like, I have a podcast idea and I also am very a proponent of people starting podcasts yeah 
But most of the successful podcasts that you look at are people who already are established some way in their career, Mm -hmm. are already have a following, who are like, here is the next thing. Like you go on a reality show, you, you get a podcast, you you know are um an expert in some way that people already follow you here's my podcast how the fuck did you blow up and i'm and i mean this in a purely like curious entrepreneurial standpoint because i'm fascinated with virality and stuff like that i think it was the perfect storm of everything i don't think like now i think there's more reddit content popping up but when like i didn't know there was any reddit podcast at all before me and i think there's there was like one youtube channel that i discovered after Mm -hmm. but i think it was the perfect storm of like no one was doing reddit yet and i just started putting it on tiktok and from the first video the first the very first one went viral shut oh my god i have very chills i literally have chills right now so i don't even know what i did and i just kept doing it and like even my like i have like this little tiktok person Simon and well used to he abandoned me now but I had Simon Mm -hmm. and he was like yeah your videos are kind of an anomaly like you're longer than any content I've ever seen and still don't lose people so you know I don't really have any advice to give you just just keep doing what you're doing I'm like I don't know what I'm doing though like I have no idea I'm just posting I kind of love that you weren't (laughs) inspired by anything no just depression (laughs) (laughs) yes we love a depressed girly depression (laughs) so because also covid everyone was on the screens yeah that was all you had and this is the thing about reddit because i've never talked about reddit on my pod even though like reddit is like you feel it all the time (laughs) and i have like a nerdy you know 27 year old brother who has been on reddit for a while and every now and then he'll be like oh your tweets on reddit and i'm like (laughs) oh now you respect me thanks but (laughs) What was your Reddit experience before the pod? What was your journey? So I first discovered it through Twitter, Mm -hmm. which is like Reddit is just like, it's Twitter and Reddit. There's back and forth, like stealing each other's content. So I first discovered it on Twitter and then just started down the rabbit hole of like, oh, what's Am I the Asshole? What's Dead Bedrooms? I'm super alone. Like there's so many different subreddits. So I just started just diving. What is the demo? Is it mostly male dominated or you can find your like female spaces or is AMA like not, is it both? I feel like it's everything. There's like certain subs that you go to like Just Know Mm Mother-in-Law, which is very like narcissistic moms and mother-in-laws, just crazy toxic dynamic there. I think that one's mostly women. Yeah. Am I the asshole? Pretty balanced, mostly men trying to like come and get their reassurance that they don't suck when Mm -hmm. they clearly do. (laughs) They they don't find it there usually. But it's great. Like, for example, when I do comedy, I love having guys and girls in the audience because there's a tension where like you can make fun of the guys and the girls laugh, but then you call out the girls and the guys laugh and the guys feel like they're learning about the female locker room while also getting called out. It's just like a beautiful dynamic. And I feel like that's what your pod. It is. I've literally had people reach out recently and they're like, a couple people have like, you've saved my marriage, which I'm like. We're obsessed. I don't know about Put that. Put it in but, the folder. <laughs> but really, yeah, I do have a folder going. THT kind words because a lot of shit makes me cry. But <laughs> like a lot of people are like, I started listening to this with my partner and it's like therapy for us. It's like couples therapy. We're learning so much about each other and the way we think, how we would handle situations have caused some breakups, but it, it needed to be done. I, I My only advice to people when they DM me is that I'm like, why are you asking? You know you should break up with him. People DM me yeah. for me to tell them to break up with their I mans, know. and I'll be that hero. Um, I love a breakup moment. But sometimes they don't Such listen. Like, purge. there's the most toxic messages I've replied to because I'm like, please get out. Yeah. Like, please get out. And they're like, I just couldn't. He said he would change. I'm like, it's an addiction. It's like people will not stop unless, like, they yeah. really want to. Well, those toxic relationships and abusive relationships, like, I think I saw a stat yesterday where it's like it takes seven attempts to leave an abusive relationship. (gasps) And it's like and then we ask these people, why didn't you leave sooner? And it's like that's just our brains. And like the way we are like this, that stupid neurotransmitter is just tricking us to want to stay. I do forget because you're very beautiful, which is just a stereotype (laughs) that women can't be beautiful and smart. But like you are very, 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 very smart. You were studying to be an occupational therapist. Yeah, I actually graduated. You graduated. Yeah. What is an occupational <laughs> So everyone's like, no, I don't need a job. I have a job, you dumb bitch. I'm like, no, 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 no. 
So there's so many different areas with OT that you can work in. Um, I think the most common one we're known for is like pediatrics. Mm -hmm. So working with kids on the spectrum, Down syndrome, any motor disabilities, like anything, mm -hmm. kiddos. Mm -hmm. um, the other big bread and butter area of it is like acute care or acute rehab. So working with stroke survivors, uh, oh, people wow. with ALS, all, all sorts of things. What sparked your interest in this? Uh, a sorority sister. To be honest, I was working at Lululemon, had no idea what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I knew I wanted to do medical stuff, but I worked as a medical scribe in the ER and I saw like the most horrific, like four year old accident of my life. And I realized I was like, okay, that's just too much responsibility. I don't want to go to PA school anymore. Mm -hmm. So a sorority sister ran into me and she was like, you should check out OT. And I did. And I was like, well, this seems like it'll be good. And it makes good money and I want to help people and so let's go for it. I'm going to be honest, I didn't really know what OT was when well, I applied to grad in school. In your early 20s, you <laughs> no don't idea. fucking know. Your job is to like, it's literally dating jobs. Yeah. Where you, you like, he looks hot, but I don't know what it's like to be with him three months in when our life is complicated. Yeah. Well, and I have like, I have commitment issues. I love quitting jobs. Like I love jumping around. Like mm, same. the shit I've done, like. I was a nanny. I worked at Lululemon. I was a flight attendant. I was an OT. Now I have a podcast. I'm like, I've just done so much shit. And I was like, now I'm like, okay, I kind of want to quit podcasting. Like, what else can I do? Like, you know what? I'm you're so weird. You're saying you're a quitter. But what I hear is you're a doer. As in when you want to do something, you just do it. And that's in positive reframing. Yeah. And that was reparenting. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but like, I did hear a quote recently that like the only difference between certain successful people and not successful people or some people don't even want to be like their version of success is different but yeah pe people who are successful do it people who don't will think of an idea and hold it forever mm -hmm. and be like i want to be an entrepreneur and but they like are more comfortable just holding the idea where like i'm it's it's like a corny michael jordan quote but like he missed tons of game winning shots but you don't remember that no you remember the ones that he won now it sounds like you got this idea in covid yeah when that idea hit you, what was the emotional, physical feeling? So I sat on this idea for 10 months. I talked about it, talked about it, talked a lot about it. And I was just so scared. I what think was your was, fear? I wasn't a content creator. I was an OT. And I had just finished my graduate program. And I couldn't get a job in OT even. And I'm like, okay, if I can't even get a job in OT, something I just went to three years of school for, what business do I have even trying something else? I was like trying to get a job was my full-time job like it's yeah. it was so much and you were overqualified for the jobs you were probably applying for as in or at least qualified yeah and now you're like why would I do something that I'm so underqualified for it was so brutal I mean I went the extra like step in my degree I got my doctorate like I didn't even just do the master's for OT I got my doctorate I had an extra like internship a doctoral thesis at UCLA like I was grinding did you enjoy it I loved it oh. absolutely loved it I um actually created my own like capstone and did uh, addressing mental health and psychosocial needs in acute care which is wow. never addressed ever oh so that was that I do have to say people will see people blow up and be successful and just be like why did that happen to her but yeah. like there's so much all that stuff led to this success and yeah. it might seem like it was like why did I do that stuff but like it all guided even the problem solving that you did in graduate school has yeah. probably helped you right now oh, yeah okay this is so <laughs> exciting for me I'm sorry I really love seeing <laughs> things like come to fruition yeah so your boyfriend gives you a little nudge yeah buys me all the equipment like gifts but we are decentering men for more life we didn't need him we did he not need him. We didn't need him, but he is a unicorn, like absolute unicorn. He still processes all my audio because he's in music, taught me how to edit. So like he was a unicorn. He's like Oz behind the curtain a little bit. I'm obsessed like, with that. Like my brain, but like kind of it started with the grunt work on his side. So he gave you some confidence to be like, oh, I have like someone who knows what they're doing. Absolutely. I, it would not have been possible without that. And like I tell myself that though, but I'm like, I also had a brother that started a podcast before me. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I probably would have found a way, mm -hmm. but the road would have been that much harder. Yeah. So I'm very thankful for him. But yeah, like sat on it 10 months. He gifted me the equipment. And then February 2021 posted the first episode and then had my best friend who was supposed to be the co-host quit. And so it, it shaped up to be something even totally different than what it was. Yeah. Why'd she quit? 
Internet is a scary place. Oh, I feel it. I feel her. <laughs> it sucks out there sometimes. Do you still talk to her? Yeah, she's my best friend. She continued to be on the show. Okay. I think it was just like the pressure and like the vulnerability of like putting yourself out there. Well, also, I almost feel like you're like a Love Island contestant where it, most people with podcasts, like either they already were famous and the podcast just continues it and you don't feel any different once your pod starts. Yeah. Or it's like a slow over five years, it starts to grow. <laughs> and I'm telling you that because that's like the growth of podcasts. <laughs> oh my God. Like really, or like you finally get 5,000 listens four, month, four years in where like she went from nothing to like everyone knowing her thoughts yeah it's so scary and it doesn't matter like I saw this quote recently where it's like stop explaining yourself to people that are determined to not understanding you (sighs) and that is like something like we had to really we were like shocked into where it's like no matter how we say or how we clarify or how much nuance we give a topic we're talking about people are still going to interpret it through their triggers they're gonna hear it through their lens of their own life experiences yeah. that you can't alter no I could literally say like I had a bad experience with a guy that played hockey once and people interpret it as you think all guys that play hockey are pieces of shit and shouldn't exist on this planet and mm-hmm. we should eradicate them and mm-hmm. I'm like I'm not fucking Hitler I just mm-hmm. said one guy was shitty mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. from your own experience like literally I, I, I but now, it because you have such like a large listener base it's like your words are powerful but also like that's so beautiful that someone else might be having a bad experience with a hockey guy and be like oh I'm not alone like maybe (laughs) maybe it's not me all the time and you know what there are good hockey guys out there I just haven't met them um (laughs) so same I I, I strongly believe that two people who went to college in the midwest um some of them were my best friends and I still think they suck at people oh absolutely I, I I love a lot of them Anyway, so (laughs) before we get canceled by the hockey community, I have to talk about Reddit in terms of because it's anonymous and there's anonymity, Mm -hmm. it lets people open up about probably really vulnerable things. Yeah. But it also allows people to be hateful without having to have any accountability. Yeah. How do you navigate working on a podcast based off of that landscape? It's really hard. So I think I try to take things at face value. And like a lot of guests have a hard time doing that. Like I have a lot of guests that will come on and they're like, this isn't real. Like this is a troll. And I'm like, you just need to take it at face value. Like what is OP telling you? And so you take everything you hear in life with a grain of salt. But I try to do my best to like take it for what it is. And same with the comments. Like if there's a troll comment or someone just like they miss the mark, Mm -hmm. I ignore it. Like I don't have to read every comment. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten criticism for that. And I'm like, I want you to read every comment. They're like, you can't skip the comments you don't like. I'm like, I sure fucking can. It's my show. Oh, I don't touch comments. Like, I don't go near comments. No. I so mean, I, I'm lying. I do. But like, I try not to. <laughs> <laughs> I I will read the initial YouTube comments and then I, I tune Ooh, out. As, I tune as out. In the comedy world, the rule is you can't look at YouTube comments. YouTube is the worst. That's the rule. Because you get blasted. Mm-hmm. Like, you'll do a five minute set that's like been watered down for you know television yeah and then everyone from every random place is judging you (sighs) and it's so easy to be like this isn't funny so that's the comedy world what people say you have the hardest world like reddit is easy compared to your world oh well i was about to say the hardest world i've ever been in was reality tv and i'm not allowed to look at reality tv reddits like Uh, oh god apparently like rules were made in reality TV reddits because people were being so mean to me where they're like you can't make up people's mental health issues oh my god <laughs> this is all just what like I I was yeah. told like a year ago because reality TV reddits are I mean I I just learned about snark reddit pages like recently <sighs> and I've been on reddit for years and I just learned about snark reddit because of another tiktoker that had like mm-hmm. old tweets come up and people were like, oh, on her snark page, like this and that. And I was like, what the fuck is a snark page? Yeah. And it's it's crazy. And like even Teffy came on and was like, there's a Jesse James Decker snark page that I love. And I'm just like, I can't imagine hating someone so much that you invest your life and time into like going out of your way to tear them down. I, I didn't understand what snark was because I don't think, I guess they're like, saying that they're being funny where I don't consider it funny 
to be you're mean. You're just a bully. You're just being mean, you're but you're covering it. Like, but we're being so entertaining. And I'm like, that is just the worst fucking energy. And as someone who's like dealt with stuff like that, I now have so much empathy for these like figures that people don't know. Mm-hmm. And they love the group mentality yeah. of jumping on it. And it's like, I think actually, yeah, early on, someone was like, you can get your videos popular by talking shit on someone. It's and easy. that is like the lowest hanging fruit and honestly like that shit will eat you alive from the inside out misery loves company what yeah. do you like you're just what are you gaining by that yeah you're, like but it's feeling that's, a little better about yourself that's the reddit i had heard about yeah. the two reddits i heard about is snark reddit where they just like tear yeah what? mostly women tearing other women down and then my brother's reddit which is talking about <laughs> video games and crypto so then i'm like where does morgan because yeah. i don't see you on the snark side i don't see no. you in the nerdy white dude side i'm i'm oddly on coin reddit i like coin reddit is that like, like bitcoin no like ancient coins <laughs> so i'm oddly over there and i'm in the craft pages oh that's fun. yeah um but mostly like relationship reddit <laughs> I didn't even know this was a thing. I, what I do know is when my re- re- when your relationship is going badly is when you start Googling, like, is not normal if? Mm-hmm. And, like, the Quora <laughs> stuff will come up. Oh, God. Yeah. And then that's when you know you're done. It's game over. It's, when you're on the Reddit yeah. and someone's like, yeah, my boyfriend did that to me. And I have a restraining order. Da, 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 da. And you're like, oh, how did I get here? I got to go. It's got to go time. Once, Run. Once you start, like, deep getting deep in the reddit about if your man is good for you i feel like the answer is already there right yeah no i think the painting is on the wall but at the same time i mean some of these people are still like I, i'm like couples therapy and you reestablish that trust and there's hope so you know what i try do to like that i do like that because a lot of it is not no one has a perfect relationship because no. life isn't perfect and you're nope. gonna have so many ups and downs but it's finding someone who like wants to survive it with you and wants to be your teammate and have healthy yeah. conversation ha- be good at fighting with you yeah how'd you meet your mans hinge good old-fashioned hinge i love it yeah it was it was crazy i didn't realize he was interested in me until like the third date when he like put his hand on my leg at a movie because he's also from minnesota but we met out in LA on Hinge Aww. and he pulled the whole like I'm from Minnesota moved out here from New York recently just trying to make some friends and I didn't reply and he's like hey sorry last ditch effort and I was like okay okay fine so we arranged for drinks out here I got too blacked out at a bachelorette party <laughs> hung over for three days flaked on him and was going to Minnesota and he was like wait I'm going to Minnesota too for like the state fair like super Midwest oh, shit. I know about the state fair. Super Midwest. The state shit. fair is lit. Iconic. It's actually <laughs> it iconic. It's so lit. The I mean, food. you'll you'll eat your body weight in fried foods, but it's lit. Oh my god! But you burn it off walking. So <laughs> is it, that what you tell yourself? Yeah, yeah. I walked 13 miles at the state fair last year. <laughs> so you're right. You're yeah, right. Yeah. And then like he he was nuts. He would get there at 6 a.m. and like go until midnight, doing all day, like take naps and like lining Google chairs. It's your guys. It's Midwest Coachella. It, <laughs> literally is <laughs> wait what's some crazy <laughs> shit you eat there ah uh, there's alligator on a stick um just full alligator <laughs> there's like deep fried oreos which are incredible yep. i like the like the classics though i'm like roasted corn on a cob mm. all about that but yeah so we had our first date in minnesota at like my favorite college bar cowboy jacks yeah. and the rest was history i do love that story for you and we're obviously not relationship experts but you have put in hours and hours on reddit and i um talk shit for a living so but i <laughs> well qualified because well qualified, i have the same kind of thing with my dude where i feel like it's so corny but like it's easy early on yeah it was i think i was my biggest obstacle like as far as guys go he was like the nicest the mm-hmm. most like comfortable with himself the biggest advocate for pushing against toxic masculinity like he is truly a unicorn we love a feminist king i know but i was like i was in my own head so much like i was my biggest roadblock in like confirming the relationship Mm -hmm. i told him no when he asked me to be his girlfriend the first time i'm obsessed with a hard to get queen yeah i just pushed back i was like no mm -hmm." i this is gonna sound controversial but i would say the guy knows first 
typically. He left the first date at Cowboy Jack's, got in the car and told his friend to print the wedding invites. He he knew immediately. I don't want to like project onto you, but my husband, like second week, was like, "I'm gonna marry you," and I was so yeah. scared. I literally was like, "This man, he's, he's gonna ruin me. my life." He's like, <laughs> "What is the difference between love bombing and him being really into you?" I don't fucking know because lines are real blurry sometimes. Real fucking blurry, especially when you love the tension. <laughs> 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 yeah, that would be extra complicated. So, you're. I want to know the people who listen. How many is it guys and girls, do you think? Or Mostly generally? the gals. But I think there's a lot of sneaky guys who, like, listen with their partner. Yes, I love that. Um, but I think I'm at, like, a 70-30 split these days. But it used to be, like, at one point it was, like, 91 girls. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. And I love the fact that it's not just like this is for the girls. It's like this is about life and yeah. whoever it, it connects to. Yeah. <laughs> How do you think you've changed from the Morgan who was in quarantine to the Morgan sitting with me now? I don't think much, to be honest. I think maybe a little happier, but I am struggling with some burnout. Mm -hmm. But I think like, I think I've become more open to things and like I'm trying to have like a yes girl moment where I say yes to more things and I'm super introverted and shy, so mm. I think I've But you're maybe, also battling burnout. Yeah. So I've, I'm trying to, like, come out of my bubble by, like, handing off the stuff that's burning me out and saying yes to more opportunities that, like, I usually wouldn't. True, true, true. I need true. to delegate. You need to... Mm-hmm. I need to delegate. Like, that's my my weakness. I'm, I'm kind of a control freak. Like, every episode of Two Hot Takes, like, I've edited. Yeah. Even episodes I've passed off to other people, I re-edit. That sound you're giving me um, Alex Cooper's work ethic. Yeah. Where she, she to this day edits every episode, yeah. but like to the point that I yelled at her and I'm like, this six extra hours of editing is not like changing it. But also, who am I to tell her that? Because yeah. this is her method that works. And it's crazy, and it's like, it probably wouldn't be that different if I passed it off. But it's almost the reassurance that like I can still control the narrative that gets put out there, mm-hmm. and I want to make sure like anyone that comes on like. I don't want them to have to make PR moves after them coming on my episode, whether that's my friends or a guest. Like, I want it to be fun for everyone involved, Mm -hmm. including myself. So Mm -hmm. it's like, even if like you're, like say you came on tomorrow and you're very hate men, I hate the world, blah, blah, blah. I'm still going to protect you a little bit and I'm going to cut some shit out. Oh, yeah. Well, you also don't want negative energy surrounding it. I don't What kind of, it's it's literally like Reddit. What kind of attention do you want? Yeah. Helping people? Or breaking people. Exactly. And so I, I love editing and I feel like I have such a lens after doing this and realizing what people are triggered by and what they're sensitive to that I maybe over edit mm. for that. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, at the same time, I'm like, we're not, we're still being ourselves, but. One hot soundbite is not going to make or break an episode. That is my, yes, exactly. That is the opposite of reality TV editing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I like. I had a friend recently. They're like, you should go on like the circle, and I'm like, I think I would rather die. Like I, Don't do I, it. I have wanted no. to be on reality TV, but I'm like, no, I, I can't. I, can't. I mean, no. Do your. I think it's. It, I'm just like it's that little do, curiosity. Do reality TV if you're the executive producer, Kardashian style. Yeah. You and your boy living your life, whatever. You're probably blown up. Like, and you, because <laughs> think about you when you said you control your narrative. Yeah. Think of your narrative being controlled by either your enemies talking about you in confessionals. I would die. Or being controlled by people who need ratings. Yeah. And ratings come from snark. Yeah. So they have to... <laughs> no, I, I, I love it. production. I, I started as like a comedy video producer. So I was always obsessed with like what makes good content. And that's why I can see within your two hot takes like how passionate you are in the production process which i think is like so fucking awesome i put so like i don't think people realize the work that goes in on the back end of my thing they're like oh you just find reddit stories i'm like but i don't just pick like the top stories that week like i sit on stories for months like sometimes like now a year i've sat on a story that i think is perfect for a guest and it sits in that folder like i go overboard on curating the content yeah which is so as an entrepreneur When do you find time to say, we can't be scrolling right now, we can't be researching, I can't be editing right now? How do you divide your week up to give yourself space? (laughs) It's so bad. Especially because you have a boyfriend too. Yeah, yeah. He is probably at his wit's end with me. Like I have a really difficult time shutting off these days because I always feel like I need to be 
replying to people and I'm like if I have a free moment there's a nice DM I could reply to to help someone or whatever so oh, always and they're gonna reply to that so it'll it'll just be a circular vicious cycle yeah, yeah so I have a really hard time of shutting down um something I am doing is like I'll post the video and then not look at it for a couple of days like I'll look at it immediately to make sure there's no problems like typically if I forget to change the title of like the upload on YouTube but there's like one caption that's me. off and you're like Argh. yeah and so <laughs> I'll look right away but then for my own peace of mind I'm like I can't recircle that I'm done mm -hmm. but even like last night at Top Gun like I made my boyfriend because he had already seen it I'm like can you go check and see if there's more wine like see if it's open still mm -hmm. and as he's gone I'm like just scrolling the comments real fast you're self-aware yeah I need to be better that's one thing and like it's so annoying for me because as no T I did work in mental health as well I worked in like a locked psychiatric facility and uh, a transitional housing unit and so I have all these positive coping strategies but goddamn, is it hard to take your own advice well also because this is like real chemistry in your brain this yeah. is real fucking dopamine hits that also it's equate so to addictive. money yeah like you doing certain things is helping you be so it's very hard when you have too much almost too much control of your life yeah it would be easier if I like maybe would have from the start handed things off mm -hmm. like I got approached by a couple of podcast people and they're like we'll take on your editing we'll do this and that and I'm like no 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 I can't no no I no because you were also still figuring out who you are yeah so how are they gonna know exactly and I just think it's again that peace of mind of like it's still up to me and yes. I it's my business it's my persona it's my idea it's it's me deep down did you think there was a chance it was going to blow up no no i i mean to an extent i believed in it otherwise i wouldn't have done it yeah. at all but i think the hardest part was and the reason why it did take so long i like was scrolling through text messages between me and my friend i spent months trying to convince someone to do it with me because i didn't think i could oh. do it on my own I was so scared to just do it on my own. So I spent months, let's do a podcast. I got a podcast idea. Would you do a podcast with me? And the universe was like showing you how hard it was to find someone being like, this is not going to work. And then you found someone, the universe was like, I told you, it's not going to work. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally. Yeah. And it's, it's so crazy how it worked out because that was my biggest holdup. So then when I finally did convince my friend, she was like, you know, I think our friends and family are going to be the only ones that listen. And I'm, you know, I don't really want to. Like, I'm too PG okay. for you. And I think that was, like, We respect quitting. a PG queen. Yeah. And so I just kind of was like, well, at this point is my baby. Yeah. And I know how to edit. So And also you love control. So, like, you probably prevented some creative, like, yeah. things that you wouldn't want to deal with. Exactly. Is it? Do you think TikTok was a big reason for it blowing up? Absolutely. Okay. I think the sole reason. Because I, I was recently talking to like a family friend who's just like in business and he's like, I want to start a podcast and I was, and he's a full-time job and people sometimes think that they just like put it out in the ether and people are going to hear it and I'm like, no, 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 no one will hear it and I'm like, you have to post two, three TikToks a day. Yeah. I also said, you have to start YouTube and he was like, oh, I can't do this. So almost you, oh, it's- It is a full-time job. Like I quit OT. You had to. I had to. Like I couldn't keep doing both. I, I was killing myself. It, you just can't do it. It's a full-time job posting. I have a friend who posts 14 TikToks and Reels a day. 14. And are they killing it? Killing it. But like <laughs> like his his personal YouTube is. So his personal YouTube hit a million. Okay. Which is huge. That is massive. Yes. But his, his podcast YouTube is only at 5,000. Yeah. It doesn't translate like you Not think it always. will. Not well, always. Well, it is like marketing where you can put so much effort into the marketing and it'll go a certain way but if the product isn't good it's not gonna have longevity yeah okay you're killing it I'm obsessed with you you're <laughs> very comfortable in hell and I also feel like you have good you have great like therapist vibes but I feel like Ew. you've really put it into a modern aesthetic I don't know what that means. I don't know I what that meant either, but it, sound, <laughs> it sounds good. If you say aesthetic at the end of anything, it sounds cool. We're going to end with a final game okay. called The Seven Deadly Sins okay. to kind of delve a little deeper into your psyche. Mm, what okay. are you greedy about? Money. Oh, yeah. Because I didn't have any. Yeah. Bef this is like I've, I have only shared this with um, my agent, my podcast agent, but... I was unemployed from OT, mm -hmm. no money coming in, mm -hmm. nothing. I was on food stamps before the podcast started making money. 
like last 2021 i had a fucking california ebt card shopping at trader joe's and then having to whip out my credit card to pay for flowers because the ebt didn't cover it so you were not getting the Haley bieber 17 dollar glow up smoothie no no i was i was eating a lot of frozen food were you scared terrified um there were i mean there were plans where i was like gonna have to move in with my boyfriend and like not pay rent and live with him and his two roommates and like a, a little house and potentially move back to minnesota and live at home again until i could make money so i was terrified and like the first month the podcast even started making money on youtube which it took three months of even being on youtube the first month i made five hundred and like twenty six dollars mm-hmm. it's like it's not a lot like people mm-hmm. see these big followings on youtube and they're like you must be making so much money and tiktok you're blowing up but they didn't have the creator fund i'm not in, the in beginning. it i joined for a couple weeks and i made six dollars yep. after having viral videos and then like but like my i felt stunted like i wasn't getting new followers they weren't going that far and i'm like okay well i'm sh- stepping on my own foot here or whatever is so it I, some, is I it sometimes left. scary to feel like the algorithm can guide your money yeah i'm at i'm at like every algorithm's mercy literally my it's, it's my so husband scary. the other day because i had like a week on tiktok actually my tiktok got this is such tiktok nerdy convo but my tiktok randomly got banned once oh. and i messaged someone and i was like i don't know what happened they go there was a bug but because it got banned i feel like it like took out a lot of the like data behind mm-hmm. my account and it almost was like i was starting from, from scratch. scratch and i was like easily every time i post a video would get minimum like 150k and the next thing i was like 20k and i was like what happened what happened and my husband was like are you sad because you took out gallery it's not good this week and i'm like i don't want to talk about it <laughs> but like it's you, so disheartening I'm though currently working on my therapist with my therapist on not having my happiness rely on external things which is very difficult um who are you envious of? Hmm. Probably my friends. And this is, this is interesting. It's gotten better, but like some of my, there's been a lot on the back end of the podcast that like everyone's kind of been struggling to feel appreciated in their own way. Mm. And so a lot of my friends that came on, especially when it wasn't making any money, did it out of the kindness of their heart. Mm. I have amazing friends. I really do. But then we got to a point where it's like, well, now you are making money. I don't feel appreciated. And so we're still kind of trying to find our footings and how do, how do we navigate this thing? Because no one an, no one anticipated this. I'm not a creator. I wasn't a manager. I'm not a business owner. I am now, but wasn't. And so it's just been this crazy back and forth. And so I kind of watched myself over, you know, the course of the show's success blowing up. And they got to come on and like have fun drinking and shooting the shit with me and putting in you know that that was work for them Mm -hmm. still but they also didn't say no to things they went out on the weekends they developed you know closer relationships and so I felt like for a while I was kind of Mm. the outsider looking in on my own life Mm -hmm. and so it's getting better now and we're like I'm trying to have them edit and we're we're pushing boundaries and things like that to try to make sure everyone's happy with the dynamic working with friends in general is hard but also (laughs) you're I, I love talking you're almost like you're freshly in the public eye it's so weird it is so f- fucking traumatizing in a way where let's say like once a month someone would hit me up for coffee yeah i got on tv five people a week would be hitting me up for coffee oh my god and then you're like you, the old hand always says yes you yeah. know like i want everyone to like me and then you realize oh you've no time for yourself mm-hmm. then there's the friends who start to act different with you then the friends who are like you're, you're using me, or, or or you think I'm using you? Like that yeah. becomes a thing, and that's just more money, more problems. Literally, Biggie Smalls, he knows what he's talking about. He he did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are you gluttonous about? What do you overindulge in? <sighs> Besides Reddit. <laughs> Reddit. I mean, social media in general. I I got to get better about shutting it down. Yeah, but. Uh, I don't know like stress shopping oh I love a stress shop I am a stress shopper and I just listened to your episode with um I'm forgetting her name but I think it was your most recent episode with she's a reality reality tv star oh 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 Sierra yeah 
And I listened to that episode and she was like, I found out I was bipolar and like, you know, the traditional bipolar things. And so I'm like, I'm kind of in the process of finding out if it's just like, if it's just my ADD, that's kind of like my neurodivergent side or if I'm like autistic. And then I hear that and I'm like, maybe I'm bipolar, uh, but I'm also a hypochondriac. So, well, this is the answer. Yeah. But this, what is TikTok shopping? showing you on your feed? Autism. So I'm like, TikTok oh. knows. I know. So, but I'm a stress shopper. It's, it's bad. I don't, but I return it. So I don't keep it because I have a weird relationship with money now because I have it and I don't spend it. Like oh people ask me for $50 and I like get upset about it. Yep. It's so weird. Oh no, I'm the same way with money where th- I've only been making money for about two years and I don't know you, I'm a control freak too. So I want to spend it, but I literally don't know how to spend it. I only know how to be tight about it I just had Annie Letterman on the pod and she gave me this is a little woo woo LA advice but I think it's worth saying I need it she's like there's energy around money like the um money manifestation and the idea of abundance where like if you hold your money tight it's gonna want to leave you but if you have money just passing through in and out it flows with a very positive energy and they say like the more you spend the more you make which is also just what you could tell yourself after a binge on you know Zara this is and I don't know if anyone like listening believes in this shit but I'm like this is coming together for me right now so when you ask me like the gluttonous thing I'm like I honestly besides like the stress shopping but I return I I don't really have anything except maybe donuts but (laughs) but literally to fried Oreos yeah but I went to this like event recently and they had an aura photographer (gasps) and I got my aura picture taken and he literally told me he goes you need to spend money he goes take your budget and blow it spend the money Mm -hmm. and i'm like okay what the fuck are you sabotaging me for bitch like he's right what are you doing my life has actually changed recently because in the last two months i hired a stylist which is the most did she do this she did this this is good and beard your bodysuit yesterday all not me not me so i i don't like doing good things for myself because it's like why do you deserve it it's always like do, why why yeah. would you get this mm-hmm. i want to work 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 so people started viewing me differently when i was wearing nicer clothes and then i started getting opportunities just because i was and i'm like the least materialistic person ever this is a fake prada and <laughs> i yeah but it was it's it's like, like even annie letterman came in with louis vuitton bag like the newest one and in my head i'm like why the fuck did you need to buy that and then she's walking around and people are like treating her differently and i'm not saying you like should by designer and stuff I'm more saying it's how you're treating yourself that Mm -hmm. then people start treating you even like your space I always used to live in a shitty apartment and recently I'm like I'm gonna hire an interior designer and then I think you then start thinking like holy fuck I'm successful yeah but if you treat yourself like a not successful hate hated bitch (laughs) people start treating you like that I know well it's, it's crazy what manifestation can do too like just manifesting that and like i don't care i go on dh gate all the time the only the only nylon prada bag i'm gonna buy is from dh i'm gate. not buying a nylon bag for fifteen hundred dollars that's no. called just science no the one like actual designer purse i have like i have a bunch of coach stuff because my mom used to work there honestly coach underrated fire right now literal fire i love it so I literally cute love, i love it so i bought my first like gucci purse but i got it half off at the rack Mm-hmm. I got a $2,400 purse for $1,200, mm-hmm. which is still insane money. Like, I realize that. That's insane. But it's the first thing, like, since having money I've, like, ever bought for myself. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this feels good. I just think of, like, those horrible stories of, like, really famous people or famous athletes who they're like, and then 10 years later, they were bankrupt. And I'm like, that's going to be me because I bought one bag. <laughs> I think that way, though. I, it's hard because I'm like, what if the podcast, like, what if I got canceled tomorrow? I don't know if it's because I'm from Brooklyn, but like I love consignment. Love thrifting. But yeah, uh, even like, yeah, you could get hit by a car tomorrow. Knock on wood. Yeah. You can't live like, you can't live like no. that. No. When was the last time you experienced extreme anger? Do you have an angry side to you or you always Minnesota nice? <laughs> no, I blow up. Um, oh, good for you. Yeah, I think I will. I d- Let it out. I bottle. I don't like to address things in the moment. Same. So I really bottle things up sometimes. Um, (laughs) The biggest blowout I think I've had in recent times is like my dad was dating this woman and she didn't want to be with my dad. She wanted my dad to be like the platonic bestie. Mm -mm. And so she had like a 16-year-old son and 
my dad is not my dad. He like adopted me oh. because he was dating my mom and it's, it's a messy oh, okay. story. Okay. It's so messy. Yeah. But he's my adoptive dad, but my dad. And so this woman was dating him, like, but not dating him, like totally cuckolding him. And she asked him after less than a year of knowing him, will you adopt my son? He needs a strong male role model. And my dad told me he was thinking about it. And I go, what the fuck does that do to our relationship? Like you're, you don't even know this kid. Mm -hmm. And so I chucked a piece of watermelon at him. Yeah, that was. You love a fruit flying queen. (laughs) It was not my finest moment. Was it the whole watermelon or a slice? It was the babyest slice, but I, I also didn't talk to him for like four days after. I was so pissed. But also that makes sense because of your own experience with adoption it really affects it just felt like it invalidated it i'm like you're gonna pick up any kid off the street which if they need it like yeah you're a good guy but like this kid doesn't need it he's just 16 and smoking too much weed and his mom's a psychopath you know what she speaks the truth um when was the last time you let your ego get in the way of something how's your ego doing i as weird as it is to say I feel like I don't have one that much. That's good. Um, I wouldn't say it's so much ego, but I had someone that like basically was like put in my lap. I had multiple people like asking me to like, you should have him on an episode. You should have him on an episode. And I like was like, okay, yeah, he would, it would be a great fit. He'd be funny, whatever. And the team reached out and they were like, well, we'd love to have him on, but we need the episode like a certain day in advance so we could make our own edits. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. So maybe that is like an, a form of ego coming no. out. But I'm like, I've never done that for anyone. And I was like, you can have PR sit in the room. No, that's basically them being like, we know what's better yeah. for your episode. And if it was weird. And that can actually hinder the quality of your content. Yeah. Because of like his needs when it's like he needs you right now. Yeah. And it was just like, it's one of those things where I'm like, I make so many accommodations for my guests that come on. Like, you can have whoever in the room. I you want can have... two apple juices tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I will get them. Don't tempt me. Don't tempt me. But I'll give you my writer. <laughs> I literally say to people, I'm like, if you say something in the moment, stop yourself, back it up, start over, I'll edit it out. Or if you if you realize after a couple of days later, like, I don't edit. I edit Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. My episodes come out Thursdays. Like, I'm a procrastinator. I need the pressure. Yeah. We Paige and I record on Monday, and it comes out Monday night. <laughs> yeah. I, literally, I've done that turnaround, too, where you record Wednesday. It's two, the best time. It just, you just get through it so fast. Mm-hmm. And so I was just like, that's not my style. You can fix in the moment, but sorry, not making that accommodation. Buddy, it, there so. is a nice, it is a nice to feel like you have a little bit of power to say no to things. Yeah. Who was your celebrity crush? Oh, God. Besides your boyfriend. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's, a, he's a musician. Um, I don't have, like... Uh, someone just showed me this one man. And I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know his name. But I'm excited to find out more. Because <laughs> it's the first person I've, like, been like, wait. He's hot. Like, I don't really have crushes. I love Nicolas Cage, but in a weird, like, I want him to be my uncle way. Yeah. But um, <laughs> this man, I was like, this is the first man I've, like, done a double take on. Hassan Piker. Let me see. I got to pull it up on Google now. So hot. Like, so hot. Also, like, I saw Top Gun last night. Miles Teller really started doing it for me. I'm like, oh I turned to my boyfriend. I'm like, we should try a mustache. <laughs> Oh no! Is everyone gonna have a mustache? Everyone is coming back, baby. It's coming back. God, I guys and their mustaches. It's like they get so fucking proud of it, and it's like you didn't do anything but be lazy on your upper lip, you know? Yeah, but it also takes some effort to curate just that top lip. It's Don't give precision. them credit. It's Don't precision. give them credit. Don't make their heads big. I don't know what he does. Oh. He's like, I guess, in movies, but also an activist. I keep hearing about him in like political context, so I'm like. I'm, I try to be very woke on the politics, mm-hmm, even mm-hmm. though I don't talk about them ever. But I was like, ooh, I need to do some research. So this might be a new one. Final question. Yes. <laughs> We're like getting rushed Final question. Room. What do you do to cope with your hell? When you're going through it and it's dark, what would you tell the listeners are little devils, some adv- coping mechanisms? Get out of your space. Whatever your space is that you're in that's like, overwhelming you frustrating you blocking you leave it 
Like it's like if I'm on the couch with my cat, get I your have ass to get up. up. Get your ass up. You know how hard it is get to move the cat? Up. Yeah. Yeah, you got to move the cat. Take it for a walk. Get one of those little buggies, strollers. Put your cat in it. Get the fuck out of your head. Get out of the house. Get out of your head. Just changing your space. Something so simple. Like, it's almost like the reframing you talked about where it's like, look at it in a different perspective. You just, you got to start moving. Got to move. I love the simplicity of that. And this is coming from a very smart human being. Yeah. Morgan, you are so fucking amazing. Oh and I'm so God, excited stop. to see all the things you're going to do because you've just like started on your like path of alignment. I'm just a little baby right now. Well, I'm you're the you're baby little baby dreamy. podcaster. Oh yeah. my God, I'm going to have you on in like three years and I'm going to have to like go through like 10 PR people to get you. But um, <laughs> where <laughs> where can people listen to you, follow you, give me all the deets? Okay, so the podcast, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, two hot takes, mm-hmm. TWO, hot takes. And then my personal, you just search Morgan Absher and it, it pops up. I'm obsessed. Thank you guys for coming to hell. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>